Welcome to Video Vulture. I'm your host, John Tebbett, recording from home. We're still under COVID. And with me are my co-hosts, Tom Bagley and Cody Cook. What up? Hey. So guys, what's our topic today? Severed heads that are ah. detached and on tables and or flying or doing stuff. That's yeah. a long independent, <laughs> independent of a body. <laughs> Okay, we've got the trailer for Thunder Cops. This thing is amazing. <laughs> this, this, this trailer, watch this trailer. Watch the movie. The movie is, is outstanding. It's often called Operation Pink Squad 2, and I think a couple of other English titles. But uh, it's insane, and it's got a flying witch head. Yeah, the trailer is completely like off the wall. There's like the head flying, and these little toy helicopters that are chasing after it. They're like shooting rockets at it, and like, tons of explosions. And the priest with the like ribbons that he's throwing, trying to stop it, it's like completely out of this world. Like, just yeah. if, if you can't even find the movie, just watch the trailer. And it looks like a show with a GoPro because it's like there's POV <laughs> kind of stuff. So. <laughs> For sure, this is but, I think one of the best scenes in the movie, and it's one of the last scenes in the movie because where do you go from there? <laughs> yeah, how do you top this scene? And, and it's a it's a clean flying witch head too, right? It's not doesn't have all the entrails hanging. Mm -hmm. like in, yeah, so songs and Indonesian trails. films. Yeah. <laughs> Totally good. And yeah, I, th I think this is the classic Sam, Ra Sam Raimi technique of uh, tying a camera to the end of a long pole, and maybe sticking the subject in front of the camera and just running through a hallway. <laughs> and that's what this, a lot of this is running through hallways. It's really funny. It's this like abandoned kind of looking building and the head's just going through hallways and the guys are chasing after it. So I could watch 90 minutes of that. <laughs> yeah, it's good. I, I, I suggest checking it out. Like, um, you can find it on YouTube, John. That's what you said. Yeah, yeah. Maybe search for Thunder Cops. I tried looking for Operation Pink Squad 2, and they, they mislabeled the movie, so it was confusing. But uh, it's it's a must. However you manage to find it, uh, check it out. <laughs> yeah. I wanted to talk about uh, Della Morte Della Mori, a.k.a. Cemetery Man, which I have the release here. Um, this is from director Mikhail Suave, who... Uh, did like the sect and the church. And um, he was also like had a bit part in demons. He's the guy with the little mask that's handing the tickets out. He's also been in a lot of other like Italian films. Um, he originally started as like Dario Argento's kind of understudy and was working like his second unit stuff and re help writing and, and directing and producing and then ended up becoming like an actor and then went on to become a director. And this was his final film that he did in 1994. Um, and this is more like, I would say, like an art film, um, art kind of zombie film, less like a splatter exploitation kind of zombie film, like what Italy is more used to. Yeah. Um, but it's definitely got like really cool effects, really great actors, really great like set pieces and stuff. And it also has a severed head. Um, there's uh, the two people that work at uh, the cemetery. Uh, uh, what is his name? It's... Um, Go on. Francesco Della Morte and then his little helper which is Nagi who's a mute and he can only say like nah nah and he falls in love with the mayor's daughter and then the mayor's daughter gets killed and anybody that gets buried in the cemetery that they're working um, after seven days comes back to life so then Nagi like digs her body up and removes her head and then keeps it in a tv in his house and they start this relationship so um, it's really funny um and I highly recommend checking it out, but this film's a little harder to get because most of the releases are like out of print. Daddy, he loves me. Step aside. I command you as your mayor. With your consent, I'd like to marry Nagi. This horrible thing? Yeah. <laughs> I'm not such a great catch either, Daddy. Not as long, dear, as I've got a breath in my body. All right. We'll fix that right away. <laughs> Help me, engineer! I'm not an engineer. the world of the gruesome and grotesque comes your most horrifying meeting with nerve-chilling fear. Mm -hmm. 
So we're going to talk about a film called Beast of Blood, which is the, I think it's like the fourth official film in a series of Blood Island movies, which were shot in the Philippines in the 1960s, uh, starting with uh, one called Terrorism Man, which is kind of a, a pretty good quality black and white, almost like a 50s science fiction movie. And then as the 60s progressed, there became uh, Brides of Blood, and then one called Mad Doctor of Blood Island. And uh, Beast of Blood is the last in the series, it came out in 1970, and it's kind of the direct sequel to Mad Doctor of Blood Island. It has this, uh, this insane dude uh, who is uh, trying to perfect eternal life uh, using a kind of a chlorophyll substance injected into uh, his test subject, who becomes the chlorophyll man, who becomes crazy and super ugly. And in this movie, he uh, it starts off really gory on a boat, and the chlorophyll man is back, and he's like hacking the guys up with an axe, and then uh, he jumps overboard, makes it to Blood Island, and uh, you know to exact revenge on this evil doctor. And uh, so there's a lot of trekking through jungles, and you know John Ashley, who was like a '50s uh, juvenile delinquent movie staple he sort of went into production and uh, became a leading man in the filipino uh, film industry i think he was involved with apocalypse now um in a produ production role and uh in this it's pretty hilarious because there's like that they always have to have the, the the babe of the movie so this one's celestia arnell who a lot of people would know from the star trek episode the apple and she was also in another movie called velvet vampire which was released through new world which is corman and uh it's they end up on this island and the, the, somehow they, they have to like they're separating the head and we're going to see this scene from the chlorophyll man and he's still he's sentient and he's talking and he's just this horrific monster who is this guy right here so, Whoa. and um and he's talking and he's saying the scientist's name and he keeps going, Lord God. He's got all these tubes of like green blood. So it looks really gory when you see it, but there's no actually red blood involving this guy. It's all this green goo. So it's kind of almost like Evil Dead 2 where there wasn't really a lot of actual blood. There was like yellow blood and blue blood. And the like tar stuff. And yeah, it's like, it's so it's kind of, it looks gorier than it is. Now we want to talk about the classic, The Brain That Wouldn't Die. This is an amazing movie. We all love it to pieces. It's so tacky and so fun and, and nonstop and gross and ridiculous and aware of itself in its own way. It, it, it kind of knows what it is. Uh, this was filmed in 1959. I think it was originally called The Black Door and they uh, kept it on the shelf until 1962 when it kind of went out to uh, the drive-ins. And it's, we got our, our heroes, Dr. Bill Cortner. He's this uh, brilliant scientist who, uh, who's worked on a serum that can keep dead bodies alive or, or bring things back to life from the brink of death. Uh, he gets in his car with his fiance, Jan. They uh, have a terrible car accident. Jan is decapitated. Uh, and the doctor bundles up the head, rushes it off to his, his evil lab where he's got uh, this, this malformed assistant named Kurt. And he, he brings the head back to life in a, in a pan of marinating liquid and a bunch of apparatus. And uh, Jan wakes up, is not happy with her situation. She'll, she tells him in no uncertain terms. Uh, Dr. Bill just ignores her and, and goes out looking for a new body to attach to his dead wife's head. And then, then he's got like sleazy background uh, nightclub music going as he's just trolling around looking for beautiful women. And he's being very cunning, trying to figure out, you know, who, who won't be missed, who, 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 who's, who's seen, seen you together. Okay, I have to let you go now. And uh, he, he gradually, it's an interesting situation because he's being true to his one true love. He's being true to his fiance. He's faithful to her, but he gets to pick a brand new sexy body for her. <laughs> It's a, it's a weird kind of thing, and he becomes the victim. He becomes a villain, I should say, rather gradually. And uh, meanwhile, Jan is just marinating in her pan and, and is, uh, is furious with him and, and realizes that there is a monster trapped in the closet in the, in the laboratory that she can communicate with telepathically because they, they use similar serums in, the, in their body or something like that. So she gets it all riled up, so it's ready for the big finale for, for the evil pinheaded monster in the closet to, to wreak horrible vengeance.
glad you came on. Thanks for watching Video Vulture. Till next time, keep your head off the table.